Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In this video, I'll show a full breakdown for how I made a procedural solar cell texture. Full disclaimer, if you're going to make a solar cell, go ahead and go to cc0textures.com, download an image texture, and use that instead. It's going to give you a much better time than manipulating this. But if you want that extra bit of control, then let's get started and you can follow along. I'll go ahead, delete the default cube, and simply replace it with a plane. I'm just going to rotate that into a view so that we can see a little bit better what we're getting, and we'll start making the texture. So open a new window, change it to a shader editor, and create a new material. We actually don't need any of the principal BSDF right now, so what we're going to do is first we're going to make sure that we actually have Node Wrangler enabled, so come to Preferences, Add-ons, and simply search for Node Wrangler, make sure this box is checked, and then we're good to go. I'm going to grab this principal BSDF, hit Control T, and that's going to bring up a texture coordinate mapping an image texture node. I don't actually need the principal BSDF right now, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I'm also going to delete the image texture. From there, I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to add in our first Voronoi node. So come to Texture and use Voronoi. Now, if you have Node Wrangler enabled, at any time you can hit Control, Shift, and left click that node. And if you are in the material preview mode, you can see what that node is doing. And if I change this randomness and bring it all the way down to zero, you can see I have a grid. To make that grid a little bit clearer, what I need is to go ahead, hit Shift A, add in a converter, color ramp, and bring it up and put it in. Now I, if I wanted to, could drag these values out and you can see my grid is going to get a little bit clearer. But what I want right now is not actually to use this for the grid. I'm going to change the offset from linear to constant. And then I will bring this value down until this white slider is at just about 0.62. Now this may not look like much right now, but that's okay. I'm also going to change this value right now to 8.92 because I know that's going to give me the look that I ultimately want. And I'm going to take the vector from here and plug it into this node. And you can see now we're actually talking because we have the little nodes that we wanted to, and they are actually going to serve as the major contacts between our solar cells. So next up, we have to add the grid or the bars that are going to connect all of these. And we're going to do that with another Voronoi. So grab your first Voronoi, hit Shift D, bring it down, and again, connect the vector into the vector. For the scale, we do actually want to use the same scale throughout, and later on we'll be linking that to a value. Again, randomness of zero. And if we go ahead and visualize this one, so Control Shift left click, you can see this is what we had before, but we're now going to change something. Instead of F1, we're going to change to distance to edge. And now you can see we have this very clear grid. But I actually want the white and black to be reversed here. So you'll remember that I had whites all here. I want the white to be connecting these, not the black to be connecting those, just because that's going to control how this is assembled later on. So grab your color ramp, hit Shift D, bring it down. Again, we still want constant offset, but now we're going to change these values. So this is the color ramp that we're going to have go from white to black. If we connect the distance into the factor and hit Control Shift and visualize this, right now we see nothing. But if we drag this just so it's the other way and the white is in here, now we can see we actually have a slider for how thick this grid will be. And this is going to be the very, very first part of our solar cell texture. So to get this to do what we want, we're just going to move over here, hit Shift A, come down to Converter, Math, and we're going to add in a math node, namely Add. So drag the color into the top input and then the color from the other color ramp into the bottom. Let's visualize that one. And now you can see we already have the basics of our node. Now, if we zoom in, there's something you're going to notice is that there are regions that are whiter than others. That's because right now what we want is actually to clamp this value so it's either going to be fully black or fully white. You don't want anything in between because that's going to influence how the textures will add later. But right away, we now have our first part of the solar cell. Very simply, we have the grid, and now we just have to add the bus bars that go throughout. And we want, if we want, we can modulate the size of these. So you can drag them up to greater or lesser extents, you know, whatever would be reasonable for your optimal wafer cutoff, etc. And if we wanted to as well, we could also change the scale. Now you'll notice if I change the scale here, the scale for this is not going to align. And so what we need is actually a value to pin these two into the same place. And we'll set that up now. So Shift A, and all we're looking for is input, value, and I'm going to change this value right now to 8.92. I just happen to like that number for the look. And I'm going to drag the value into the scale here, and also into the scale there. And so now if I want to, I can slide this value and everything will move together. This is usually just used so that you can align the edges the way you want. So I would drag the scale until it was roughly better along those edges. 
Now that we've got all that settled, it's time to start adding the bus bars, and I'm actually just going to reset this to 8.92. Now the bus bars are quite similar. We're going to use Voronoise, and in fact, we're going to use this same Voronoise, so I'm going to grab it, hit Shift D, and drag it down. But this time, I need to separate these coordinates for the from coming from the mapping node so that we can restrict them in the X and Y directions. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'll just drag a box over here quickly and move this out, hit Shift A, and what I'm looking for is Converter, Separate X, Y, Z. So I'm going to put this in, and I'm going to connect the vector in here, and I'll connect the X into this vector for the first Voronoi, and I'll drag that down, create a second, and I'll drag the Y into this one. I also want the value node to control the scale for both of these as well. So I'll drag those into there. And you can see that this actually missed. That Y should have been dragged into the vector. And let's visualize what we have here. So now you can see this sort of simple grid. And again, you can see a simple grid, but going in the other direction. And so what we need now is actually to control the extent of that grid and to control the placement. And so we're gonna do that again with a color ramp. So let's go ahead duplicate this color ramp. You can see that's actually connecting in right away. And this one is white to black, but we actually do want it to be black to white. So we'll drag this out on the other side and we're gonna grab this white value, select it and move this to a value of just about 0.4. I'll then duplicate that and we'll connect to the X one. We'll bring this in and we'll change this to a value of just about 0.48. You can't actually go over 0.5, otherwise you won't really be able to see this. So fine lines in one direction, fine lines in the other direction. Not so fine lines actually at the moment, but you do want some of these bus bars to be thicker than others. And so that's not really a huge problem. Now to get this to work nicely, what we're going to need to do is manipulate this value coming into the scale so that by the time it hits these two color ramp nodes, what we're actually getting is multiple repetitions of these lines that still fit within the grid. And we're gonna do that again with a simple math node, namely a multiply. So shift A, converter, math, just stick it right in there between the between the value and the Voronoi and grab this menu, change it from add to multiply and the type or the value that we're going to multiply by for the X direction is 10. And we'll just make sure that we're actually visualizing that node. You can see 10. So if we brought this to one and we weren't multiplying at all, these would be the fine lines that we would have. If we bring it up to 10, then what we're going to have is these very fine lines and that will be the bus bars sort of horizontally then again, same idea, we'll duplicate this node with Shift-D, just connect it into there. And for these ones, well, again, we'll visualize here. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply by a lower value. In this case, it's going to be four. And so now you can see we have our bus bars going horizontally and vertically throughout the larger cells. Again, we're going to add these two together. So Shift-D on our add node. We do want this one to be clamped as well. And we'll put the two color ramp values in. We'll visualize that and you can see we have a grid that has the vertical and horizontal lines because they're all sharing a scale what that means is that when i take these two add nodes i'll shift d duplicate this one again and add these two nodes together and when we have all of that in hand you can see we now have our major contact points with our larger bars which we can control the size of so we'll go ahead and control the size of those we can control the size of the major contact points. We can control the size of the smaller and larger bars using each of these color ramps. And if you wanted to as well, you can also control the number by changing the multiplier. So if we wanted to use a value of say five, now you can see these are further spread apart. So 10 was actually where I liked it. And for four, you could change this to say two, and now we have one stripe through the middle. I find it tends to work in certain multiples. So two, four, I actually prefer four because I think it gives the best look. And I'm actually going to drag this color ramp back down because that is a little bit, actually I'll drag it up because that value is a little bit too big. And so what we've done is all of these nodes together have now given us a very, very simple black and white map. And anytime you have a nice black and white map, what that means is you can use it with a mix shader as a factor input. And so we can control whatever texture we want and have it placed there. So we'll go ahead and we'll very, very simply add in a two diffuse textures. In fact, we'll use two glossy textures. So one glossy texture here, and we'll bring the roughness down. This is a effectively going to approximate silver for us. If we were to just go ahead and show that right now, you could see we've got this kind of metal silver hue. And now we'll just shift D duplicate this glossy texture and we'll create a blue 
similar one, and if we visualize that again, still blue. Now what we can do is I'm going to just hit Shift A, add in a shader, a mixed shader, and I'll plug these two inputs in. And now using our black and white map, we'll connect this into the surface for the output. If I were to slide all the way between zero and one, you'd see zero gives us all silver and blue gives us all, well, one gives us all blue. If we grab this add value that it's giving us this perfect mask, we can drag that into the factor, visualize this, and what you see is we now have these values mapped and actually these should be the other way around. So we'll just go ahead and flip those inputs. And now we would have the blue for our base silver or our base solar cell material, the silicon, and we would have the silver for the metal contacts. This is a very, very simple texture. Obviously, you could, you could change this to whatever color you wanted, so green or purple or red, et cetera, et cetera. You could also change the contacts to be darker or lighter or less or more metallic using other principled, or using the principled BSDF primarily. And of course, as mentioned before, you can toggle through all of these inputs to control aspects like the bus bar size, you have one master control over here for the value to control the scale, i.e. how many of these are repeating across the surface. If you're really finding that this edge is not playing along, what you can actually do is come up to your texture coordinates and just drag this value sort of up or down until it aligns just a little bit better with what you are kind of hoping for. And so very simply, I can now grab this plane, move it around however I want, and I have this sil silicon solar cell texture that we've made completely with nodes. Uh, as a last touch, I'll show how I would actually set this up with materials and we'll hope that it will actually render. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these two, shift A, and we'll add a principled BSDF. I'm going to again make this one a kind of dark blue the way that we had it before. We'll plug that into this top output. And we'll bring the metallic all the way up to one, the roughness down to 0.2. Now the way that we're really going to get this to work is to get that texture, we're just going to hit shift a add in a vector bump drag the normal into the normal bring the strength way down to about 0.01 and then we'll add a texture a noise texture tends to work fine for this i'm going to grab the factor bring it into the height and i'm going to bring that scale up to about 25 when i brought the scale up you can actually see a little bit of that warble now we'll bring the detail in if i were to zoom in now you could actually see some of that underlying scale that's exactly what we want if we want we could make this effect more prominent by changing the strength of the bump but this is actually not bad i'll go ahead and drop the strength down to 0.05 and similarly for the silver material what we're going to do is just shift e duplicate this principled bsdf make this one essentially white which will be silver for us I'll grab these two nodes, shift E and duplicate them as well, and just bring this into the normal. You could change the scale here just for a bit of a different effect, and we'll plug this into the bottom half. And once it's updated, you can now see we have this silver. The silver effect is a little bit too strong here. I do think that bump needs to be cut down a bit. But very, very simply, just like that, we now have a simple map for making a solar cell texture. It will work for pretty well any material that you want to set it to, so Again, we have all these options for color. We have the grid layout that you can change and control. And very simply, that is the full breakdown. So as a last part, I'm going to just come back to the shader editor and very, very slowly pan across. So if you want to pause the video at any point, you could go ahead and do so and then just see what this actual setup looks like. As always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. Until next time, have yourself a great old day.